Welcome back, everybody. So we're going to take a look at a new workflow I've put together called Ananke. Now, this is a high-res SDXL workflow. You can get it on my Civit. It's in the models, under models. I'll put a link in the description. But just taking a look, it's not really like a, a detailer. So here you can see that it's made the teardrop a little bit more coherent. And here where we had a like an elk and uh, it's actually made it look way more accurate. So it uses my new custom node called aspect size. I originally made it for cascade. So what it does is it sets the maximum height and width, and then you choose your aspect ratio. But then what it does is it does a little bit of rounding math to make sure that your final dimensions divide properly. If I noticed that there are numbers between one and six, zero, is it one and 16 or multiples? The bottom line is I will go through it in the next video, in fact. So uh, just watch out for that one. But anyway, what this workflow aims to do is just increase the coherence by doing two passes. It's, that's, it just makes sure that your dimensions are actually divisible by uh, 16. So it's pretty simple. There's probably other nodes that do the exact same thing, but I've noticed that it made good results with uh, SDXL. So we start off with the uh, checkpoint loader. And we take the checkpoint loader into, I don't know how, but I've accidentally made it a custom node. So this is a pretty good example, actually. So I've just discovered that I created this incorrectly. So what I'm going to do is fix it. I don't need a custom node for this. So obviously I just ended up with one. If I just look for a primitive and open up the clip text in code, drag the Primitive, this would be our positive prompt into the G and the L. And then I'll just copy my prompt across with Control A, Control C, Control V. I'm going to right click it and make this green and then delete the one I don't need. Bring that out a bit. So now we've got that one. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it, minimize the clipping code, open up. Uh, the uh, open that up, connect the negative, copy the negative text in, change the color to red, delete the old one, and then this will be what I'm actually going to upload. But you could have done that yourself. Basically, I just accidentally picked a custom node you don't need. Um, so let's go through what this actually does. So minimize that, takes the positive and the negative prompt, puts it into a SDXL clipping code, which then goes into the K sampler, comes out of the VAE encoder, gives you a preview. That's what you would have got with a standard SDXL generation. Now with extreme resolutions, you I've got a little, little catch here, which prevents the uh, final upscale from getting too big. You can also control B and bypass that one or change it for whichever upscale you want. I've just got it on this one because I like how I can change it from two to four easily, load my model and it'll just do it nicely for me. And it's got the rounding modulus feature, which is nice. It's also using a tiled encode on the way in and tiled decode on the way out. So what this does is it takes the output and then reprocesses it with the same prompt okay it's full denoise on both sides eula ancestral 30 steps 8 cfg and what have i got right now i've got digital art by okay so this is a prompt i've taken from civet so this should make some kind of artistic stuff and like i said if you're using a strange aspect ratio yeah let's just talk about that quick while it's cooking so what my custom node is doing is it's asking you to choose the model. So in this case, SDXL. So it's going to have a maximum of 1024 by 1024. So, and then we're going to do aspect width 16 by nine. Now, just, just make sure to look at this prompt. The prompt doesn't actually have what animal we want. It's just a particular type of artist who does that kind of thing. And then there's your uh, negative prompt. Like I said, I've copied this prompt from one of the uh, images that was up on Civit. 
And here it is. So this is what he would have got from a uh, standard generation. And then this is what we've ended up with. So I'd say that this is a lot better. Hey, it's not perfect, but this is, this is like a, a fixed seed on both sides. I think, no, no, it's random. So we'll get another one and see what the next one looks like. So I've randomized the first and fixed the second. You can do whatever you want, really. It doesn't matter. Stops it from being a bit too squirrely. I've kept a bunch of uh, interesting prompts. So we've got positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. All right. So, okay. So the image, like I said, the image changes a lot. But I think you get a lot of detail in the second pass. So... You know, if you couldn't see what it was, you wouldn't really know that it changed a lot. So I like this. I like this a lot. Um, obviously, you can take the denoise on the second stage down, and then it will become more like the original. But the idea is to make it do this two-stage process, and then because you end up with much more detail in the background and in, in the plumage, uh, stuff like that. So anyway. So that's what this workflow is all about. In the next video, we're going to check out the actual uh, this actual custom node here. Um, if you don't have my custom node, you can just delete this and right click, convert to widget, and then you you can put in your height and width like you normally would. Um, but I just make sure we'll we'll look at it in the next video anyway. So that's everything I had to show you on this front. So like I said, you can get the uh, you can get the model over on Civit. The uh, link is in the description. So thanks very much. And I will see you in the next one.